Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the channel and this one is all about how to get started in HBM's nuclear tech mod. Now before going into this, I would like to say thanks to my friend Tanks for helping me out with this one and also to the HBM's nuclear tech wiki for filling up the missing pieces of information that I had. Now also another thing that I would like to tell you is please install not enough items as without that mod, your life is going to be really difficult in this mod. So now with that out of the way, without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Alright, so we are gonna start this one by learning the most important skill which is actually using not enough items. So when you go into your inventory, on the right hand side you will find the not enough items tab where you can scroll through all the different blocks that are present in all the mods that you have installed. Now if you go into the item subsets, you can also sort out these blocks via the respective mods they are present in. Now if you want to manually search for anything, let's say I want to search for the assembly machine, just type in assembly and everything that uses it comes in here. Once your mouse is over the assembly machine, just press the R key and it will show you the crafting recipe for the assembly machine. So you can check out the crafting recipes using the R key. Let's say you have an item in your inventory to check its recipe, simply take your mouse over it and press the R key and that will bring up the recipe for that specific block. Not only that, but you can also check the uses for any block. Now let's say I want to check the uses for the stealing quad. Just hover your mouse over it and press the U key. And by pressing the U key, you will bring up all the uses and all the recipes that actually use the stealing quad. So yeah, not enough items is a very handy mod and it will make your life much easier. So please do install it. Now let's take a look at all the different ores that you will need in the early game. Mainly you are gonna need iron ore, gold ore, copper, titanium, aluminum, tungsten and also lead. Now get your hands on as much gold as you can get and also get some fluoride, lapis and redstone. Now along with these ores you are also gonna find some radioactive ones like thorium and uranium but we don't have much use for them in the early game. So with the ores out of the way, the very first thing that you need to craft in this mod is going to be the machine template folder. Now the machine template folder is pretty important. It is crafted using 4 pieces of lapis, 3 paper and 2 bone meal. And once you have crafted this, you are going to need this machine template folder in order to get everything else in this mod. And yeah, these are all the different templates that you can get through it. You can craft the plate templates, siren templates, fluid identifiers and also machine templates in this uh, machine template folder. Now the next thing you will need are gonna be the anvil. You can craft the iron anvil which is a tier 1 anvil using 6 pieces of iron ingot and 1 block of iron and also you can craft the lead anvil using 6 pieces of lead ingot and 1 block of lead. For the sake of this tutorial I am gonna go with the iron anvil as iron is available in much more quantity. So once you place down your anvil if you scroll through here you can see all the different recipes that you can craft using this anvil. So the first machine that we are gonna go for is going to be the burner press. Now the burner press is crafted using 6 pieces of iron ingot, then 1 block of iron, 1 piston and 1 furnace and that will give you the burner press. Now in order to use the burner press you are also going to need some flat stamps which are crafted using any material of your choice. I am going with the iron one, 3 pieces of bricks and also 1 piece of redstone. So this will give you the flat stamp for iron, but there are the flat stamp for stone, steel, then or you have titanium, obsidian, sherbidium and also dash, all with different amounts of durability. So craft at least 3 to 4 stamps as you are going to need a lot of them. And when you have both of these things, just place down your burner press. So. Once you go in the GUI of the burner press, here we are gonna place our fuel. The upper slot is for the plate stamp and the lower slot is for the item. And if you click on recipes, you can see all the different things that the burner press can do for you. So it can make plates, it can make wires, circuits, whatnot. So once you have all the flat stamps in your inventory, just open your machine template folder and click on plate stamp. And as soon as you do that, you will see that one flat stamp has been consumed and it has been converted into a plate stamp. Similarly, make one wire stamp and also one circuit stamp. The flat stamp in your inventory will get consumed and get converted into the wire stamp and the circuit stamp. Okay, so it's now time to smelt some copper and once you smelt this copper, you are going to get the industrial, oh sorry, yeah, the industrial grade copper. So smelt at least two or three just make sure that you are not 
using all of your ores right now as we are going to double them really soon so place down your industrial grade copper and place down your plate stem in the top slot now as soon as you start placing some fuel some coal in the burner press you will see that the gauge of the pressure will start going up as soon as it hits the yellow mark the press will start doing its work so there it has made one copper plate out of one copper ingot now as you can see even though we have nothing in there the fuel will still continue to burn in order to stop this just take a lever and place it beside the burner press and activate it this will make sure that the burner press is not burning any more fuel all right so now that we have crafted some copper plates let's convert them into copper panels as copper panels are required to make the blast furnace which is going to be our second machine so in order to make some copper panels you are going to need four copper plates which is going to give you one copper panel so make sure that you have enough copper plates in your inventory i'm going to grab them like this and then press the anvil icon and by pressing the anvil icon you will see that the copper plates get consumed and they get converted into copper panels so just craft as many as you want or as many as they are needed now once you have all the items required for the blast furnace which is the tungsten ingot iron ingot stone bricks and the copper panels press on the anvil icon and that will give you one blast furnace now the blast furnace is a pretty important machine as it is what you are going to use in order to make steel so if you quickly click on the gui of the blast furnace here it is how it looks and when you click on the recipe you can see that by combining iron and coal you can get some steel and also the second most important recipe is going to be by combining copper and redstone you are going to get minecraft red copper so here i am going to show you guys how this works just place some coal or also you can use lava in order to fill up the internal fuel buffer and it will give you two pieces of steel and by pressing copper and redstone in here you will get minecraft red copper now there is one interesting thing about the blast furnace is that it doesn't use its internal fuel as long as there is nothing it can use it on all right so a steel tank can be crafted using six pieces of steel plate and two pieces of titanium plate and using the tank you can craft the combustion generator which is going to be a power generation source six pieces of steel ingot one minecraft red copper which we got from the blast furnace if you remember and the steel tank will give you one combustion generator now i recommend crafting at least two as you are going to need it in order to power our assembly machine so once you have made the two combustion generators if we look at the internal gui it needs water and some fuel in order to produce power so this also works as your battery kind of so in order to complete this thing we are going to need some pieces of cable and cable is made using insulators one piece of wool two string will give you four insulators two pieces of insulators and three red copper wire will give you red copper cable now in order to make the wire you are going to get some minecraft red copper and then put it under the wire stem and that will give you red copper wire so that is how you craft wire by the way any type of wire once you have the red copper cable and the insulators ready then you will also need an infinite water source which is crafted in the following manner and after we have all of this let's go to our combustion generator place down the water in the top slot and also place some fuel in the fuel section and it will start producing power all right so now time to craft some copper coils using eight red copper wire and one iron ingot now this red copper coil can be converted into ring coil using an anvil so two copper coils will give you one piece of ring coil so craft them and once you have the ring coil combining the red uh, the ring coil the copper coil and the red copper wire with two pieces of steel will give you two pieces of mortar now we are going to also craft the basic circuit assembly using a steel plate redstone and aluminum wire which will give us the basic circuit assembly and then you can take the circuit assembly into your burner press place down the circuit stem and let the burner press do its job as soon as the pressure reaches enough it will be converted into a basic circuit now there is one more thing that we need to do that we need to make a steel anvil by combining one iron anvil with 10 pieces of steel ingot and that will give you a steel anvil now inside this steel anvil you can craft your assembly machine that is why we needed the steel anvil by the way it is the level 2 anvil 
and it will give you much more recipes than the previous iron anvil did. So if we search for the assembly machine, here you can see all the requirements that it has. Glass, steel ingots, copper ingots, motor and also basic socket. Now we have all of these things in our inventory. So if I simply just click on the anvil icon, it will craft me an assembly machine. And when you do this in survival, by the way, you will get an achievement. Now with the assembly machine crafted, take the copper cables that you crafted before and red copper cable and just connect them to the assembly machine like this, which will in turn power. Now make sure that you have some paper and die in your inventory. And I'm going to go into survival in order to show, the, show this to you guys. Go into your machine template folder and craft a template for the shredder. Now, as you can see, one paper and one die got consumed and we got a shredder template instead. Now, the shredder template, when you put it in the assembly machine, will show you all the different things that you need. So, the coated red copper cable will be made in this formation like this. Then, you will need a steel beam, which is made using three steel ingots. The iron bars will be made using three, uh, six pieces of iron. Once you have all of these things and you place them inside the assembly machine, it will start doing its job and it will craft the shredder for you. There we go. Now with the shredder crafted, place it down connecting to the copper cable and it will be powered up. Now this is going to serve as a basic 2x ore processing tool. But in order to use the shredder, you are going to need the shredder blades which are crafted in the following formation. And I am going to craft the steel one. But as you can see, there are a different types like the aluminum, golden blades, iron shredder blades, steel ones, titanium, advanced, CMB and the shirbidium and the dash. All of these blades have different durabilities. So I'm going to put some aluminum powder in there and as soon as you do that, the shredder will start doing its work and convert the aluminum ore into aluminum powder. So each aluminum ore is going to get converted into two aluminum powder. And that, it and that is how our ore is gonna get doubled. So when you take this aluminum powder or any powder and you place it in the furnace, it is going to get converted into ingot. So one ore will give you two pieces of ingot. This is going to serve as your early game two times ore processing when you don't have the centrifuge. And the shredder has other uses as well. I recommend checking the recipes. Now you will notice that the shredder blades will lose durability when they do the shredding work. So in order to regain all the durability, just place the shredder blade around two of its blades that you have crafted it with. Alright, it's now time to go to the nether, but the nether is actually a bit radioactive. So it's better to get some decent armor before going there. And in order to do that, we are going to craft the advanced alloy armor by combining minecraft red copper with steel ingots. And that will give you the advanced alloy ingots. Now these advanced alloy ingots can be converted into all the different armor pieces like the recipes are the same as they are for vanilla minecraft. Now once you craft all the different pieces and put them on, you will see that it will give you damage resistance and also radiation resistance which is pretty important while dealing with radioactive places and objects. Now another interesting thing is that you can also craft it into weapons. So here if I craft the advanced alloy sword, it will give me stun modifier basically it will stun the enemies and also by crafting the pickaxe it will give you the vein miner ability okay so now we are ready to go into the nether so i'm in here the, in the nether and here the main thing or the two main things that you will find are going to be sulfur which is this nether sulfur ore you are gonna get tons and tons of sulfur through here but be sure that you stay away from this smoldering nether egg it will burn you and after sulfur, the main thing that we came to find here was the quartz ore. So after looking around for some time, here is the nether quartz ore that we want to ore, or sorry, that we want to mine actually. So once you start mining it, you will get some uh, quartz particles here. Hold on. Here, as you can see, we got some nether quartz when mining the nether quartz ore. So make sure to get your hands on as much nether quartz as you can as it is very important to craft the sockets. Now alternatively you will also find some nether uranium ore in here but be careful while dealing with it. Now once you have your nether quartz we are going to shred it in order to get some quartz powder. 
So place the nether quartz in the shredder and it will be converted into quartz powder. There we go. And now we are going to use this in order to craft the enhanced circuit. Once you place all the required items, which is going to use the quartz powder, you are going to get some enhanced circuits. And using the enhanced circuit, we are going to craft the advanced circuit. So there we go. We have crafted the advanced circuit. So that is why the quartz powder is pretty important. Now once you have crafted the advanced circuits and the enhanced circuits, you can use it to craft the chemical plant. Here are all the ingredients that you are going to need in the assembly machine in order to craft the chemical plant. And once the chemical plant is done, get yourself an oil reservoir detector to find some oil. Then using the oil reservoir detector when you have found some oil, you can extract the oil using the direct, boil it in a boiler in order to get some hot crude oil and then use a refinery to separate all the different components of the hot crude oil. I have made an entire video on it. Now alternatively, if you don't want to use the combustion generator, there is an alternative source which is the solar tower boiler. Now the solar tower boiler, you will need to craft the big steel shells and using the big steel shells along with 4 ingots and 2 insects, you will get the solar tower boiler. Now you will also need the heliostat mirrors and the heliostat mirror adjustment device. I also have made an entire video on solar tower boilers and it is a renewable source of power with the only downside being that it only produces power during the daytime. As there is no sunlight during the night, it won't produce any power. And you also need uh, resources, like much more resources compared to the combustion generator. But hey, if you want to go for it, then go for it. It is renewable, it is free, once you have crafted it, that is. So I hope you guys found this video informative and helpful. If you did, do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Peace out my guys, stay safe.